transmission strip. The, the trip was rewarding and exciting and life-changing. And I would say to anybody, I know this church has a, a, a heart for missions. And I would say support every person who is on the field. One, it's, it's an expensive thing to be a missionary, but also a risky thing. And we've been talking about persecuted Christians. Uh, when I went to Nigeria, you know, we, on statistics on paper, they say it's, it's um, almost 50-50 in terms of Christians slash Muslim, um, in terms of the religion and the culture that rules the nation. But I would tell you what you really sense when you go there, uh, as you land in that airport is that this is a Muslim country. Um, I would say the businesses, the government, most of the things are slanted towards Muslims. And so you have to be very careful. And um, that experience was very risky. And so in going, we, we had to have protection while we go out into the streets to share because in those countries, it is not, even though they have Christians, most of the Christians, I would say, are underground, meaning that they don't really stand up for their faith. As a matter of fact, they thought that we going out and sharing was very bold. And there were some areas that we would ask, to, ask them to carry us to reach the unreached people groups. And they were hesitant at some point. Um, even though they went along with us and they supported what we did uh, in in being there and in speaking to them, there is a lot of um, fear and tension because persons are kidnapped and people are killed for um, sharing the gospels in the gospel in nations such as these to unreached people groups. Uh, when I went there, we did uh, um, we served in various capacities. We served we we shared the gospel in marketplaces. Um, in villages, which is like what you would call very, very rural co communities. And we also shared in kids' crusades. And the response was very, very effective because for the most part, people responded. But I do recall that there were times when we shared the gospel with Muslims and they really received the message and they really said yes, but they didn't want to go any further because they didn't want their family members or loved ones to know that they were they had um, accepted Jesus in their hearts as Lord and Savior. And so for me personally, um, I think one of the eye openers for me as we went was that we take a lot of things for granted in this side of the world um, where we have the openness to share our faith and to serve the Lord. And whereas other people may have access to the gospel from time to time, they don't have that openness and to stand up for it, 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 it is a costly thing. And you know, the Bible talks about anybody who decides to follow Jesus must take up their cross and drink this cup that he has, that he has taken, you know, and the cup, is a part of the cup is persecution. And in our, in our side of the world, let us not sit on our laurels and know that this is not very far from us in terms of um, standing for our faith. But I would say personally, um, anybody who has a heart to reach the lost and you know that God has put a, a burden on you to share with persons in unreached people groups, go ahead. It is uh, a satisfying experience. Um, I recall when we were training, they said that when, you, when you're going out, before you go, you must pray and ask the Lord to give you that burden so that when you are praying for the lost, you, you get the Father's heart for each person because the scripture says the soul who sins will die. And I recall having an experience where I said, Lord, I want your heart for the one. And we were up in a, a village where the vehicle couldn't go all the way up to where we were. And so we had to walk a part of the way to share in this village. And it was my turn to, to preach the gospel. 
And as I was preaching, I saw a little Muslim girl in a home wanting to come out with all the uh, persons who had come out into the square to, to hear the gospel. And this little girl kept asking her parents, I'm preaching, but I'm seeing. And she kept asking her parents and they were not responsive to her in terms of her coming out. And I remember when I gave the call, cause I preached as loud and as far as I could in terms of projecting so that anybody anywhere could hear this gospel. And as I was making that altar call, the little girl burst the gate and ran out and ran all the way up the road to where I was. And I, I kid you not, I started to cry. And I'm saying, look what we take for granted, that there are people who are hungry to hear God's word and we don't have a heart for them. And so I'm very happy that there is a group that is uh, committed to praying for the lost and to praying for missionaries and persecuted Christians because they do need our support and they do need the courage to stand up for what they believe in. I don't know if I'm out of time, so I'm going to wrap up now and thank you so much for allowing me to share. Amen. Um, I'm going to invite Sister Marjorie Scott and listen to I'm going to share my screen to um, begin to, um, to, to, to pray for, um, for Nigeria. Sister Mar Thank you, Sister Diana. I appreciate it. Turn over to Sister Marjorie Scott Anderson. Thank you, Pastor D. Um, so I'll read. Um, Nigeria is geographically divided along religious lines with a Muslim dominated North and a majority Christian South. There are more than 80 million professing Christians in Africa's most populous nation. The fruit of both pioneer mission work and freed slaves who returned to the continent from Europe with the gospel following the 1833 abolition of slavery in England. Foreign missionary activity in the Muslim majority North has declined significantly since 2008 as a result of the emergence of the Islamic militant group Boko Haram. Based in the North, Boko Haram is affiliated with Al-Qaeda and has also aligned itself with the self-proclaimed Islamic State, ISIS. Although Boko Haram has weakened somewhat in the Northeast, it still carries out devastating attacks in the Christian communities and on army units in the region. Toward the end of, 90, of 2019, the Islamists began stopping commercial vehicles and removing Christians for execution and abduction. Boko Haram is also reportedly backing ongoing attacks on Christian villages by Islamic Fulna, Fulani militia who have concentrated their attacks in the central region of Nigeria. Muslims in the North want to create a separate country governed by Islamic Sharia law. The terrorist group want to drive Christians and continue their push for an Islamic nation. Majority, major religions, 51% of Nigerians are Christians, including 26% evangelical. The nation is divided between Christians and Sunni Muslims, and most Christians in the South, and with most, sorry, Christians in the South and most Muslims in the North. Their persecutor, Boko Haram Islamic extremist group and Fulani Islamic militants work together to attack Christians throughout Nigeria. So there are two um, groups, primary groups that, that um, do the persecution, Boko Haram and um, the Fulani. What it means to follow Christ in Nigeria. 
Nearly all Christians in Northeast and Nigeria have lost family members been attacked by Boko Haram or Islamic Fulani, Fulani militants. Entire congregations have been displaced and many pastors have been forced to leave the region. Being active in church looks much different than it did at the beginning of the 21st century. It now takes great courage and faith to openly worship and serve Christ. Thousands of Christians remain in camps designated for internally displaced people. With few schools able to function because of the violence, families are concerned about their children's education. Life is a constant struggle, and in some places it is difficult for Christians to find food. Famine threatens farms in the north as a result of ongoing Islamist violence. Farmers are killed by Fulani militants when they attempt to return to their farms. Many villages and farmlands have been taken over by the Islamist militias. Access to Bibles. While Bibles are plentiful in the South, there is a great need for them in the North. Many Bibles have been lost in attacks, and as people have been displaced, most Christians in the North do not own their own Bible. Even if they were available, few in the North could afford them. VOM supports widows who have lost their husbands in Islamist attacks and trains and equips pastors in the North. This is Voice of the Martyrs, VOM. We also provide stu study Bibles, New Testaments, and Christian discipleship literature to believers. We're gonna now pray. This has been difficult to, to read, um, to hear, and to, to yeah, just hear. Um, so Father, first, I, I just, I really want to thank you for the privilege of living in the West, living in the free world. Help us, Lord, as we focus on those who are being persecuted for their faith. Help us to be compassionate. Widen our understanding. And help us to submit to your calling. We pray, Father, for believers living in overcrowded camps after being driven from their homes. Um, being displaced, Lord, is, is, not, is not easy. Um, and so we put, we put these, your body, those who have put their faith in you, who are, have been driven out from their the comfort, the familiar of their homes and are now not just in camps, in unfamiliar cultures sometimes, but also overcrowded and very often unhealthy. We pray, Lord, for the many widows who have been forced off their land. We pray for the believers in the Northeast who have survived attacks from Boko Haram, Lord, we pray that you will help to heal their trauma, that Lord, somehow they will be drawn to you, those who know you into a deeper and yeah, wider relationship. We pray, Lord, for the orphans who have lost their parents to these terrorists. We thank you, Lord, that you are the Father who comforts the widows, and orphans. And again, Lord, I pray that you erase any and every trauma from these children, that despite their physical traumatic circumstances, Lord, they will find shalom in you. We pray, Lord, for those in the 
Miango region, which have suffered repeated attacks by these mercenaries. Lord, we ask that you grant safety to the staff of missions, missions agencies, missionaries, churches who have determined to follow you, to speak of you, to stand up for their faith in spite of that, Lord, you will grant them safety as they travel to check in on these families and to get updates and to distribute relief. We pray for their safety in receiving these products, these relief bags, packages, even as we pray for safety in distribution. And God, we pray that you will strengthen the faith and the resolve of every frontline worker in Nigeria. Give them courage beyond what they could imagine or think. Father, we thank you for Jesus, whose blood has given us access into your holy presence so that we can come and intercede on behalf of, of our brothers and sisters and on behalf of the nation of Nigeria. And so, Lord, we do, as Jesus said, we should ask you, Lord of the harvest, to send laborers. He also said that anything we ask in his name that concerns the work, your work, the work of kingdom building, that you hear and you answer. So we come, Lord, and we ask. And we say, do what only you can do. And because we ask in Jesus' name, so let it be as we have asked, Father. Amen. Thank you, Sister Marjorie. Okay. I'm going to ask Sister Artery, just um, unmute your mic and begin to share a little bit about Afghanistan and to pray from the list if she can. Okay, sir. Thank you. Good morning, good evening, good night, everyone. The good news of Christ reached Afghanistan by the second century, but today there are no church buildings. Cultural and religious opposite, opposition to the gospel, as well as significant security issues, remain great challenges to Christians in Afghanistan. Sadly, most Afghans have never heard the gospel, do not know a Christian, and have been indoctrinated to follow Muhammad's teachings with, Christ with Christians. Radical Islam and violent tribal political activity make the nation a difficult and dangerous place for Christians to practice their faith. Both local and national governments are highly antagonistic towards Christians. Extremist groups, including the Taliban and the self-proclaimed ISIS state. There is 99.8% of Afghans that are Muslims. And of that amount, 90% is Sunni and 10% Shiite. There is nevertheless a special unity among Christians laboring for the gospel in Afghanistan. While church growth has remained slow, significant Christians growth have occurred among the Azara people and some among other people with groups also coming to know Christ. African Christians cannot worship openly but in homes or small venues, and evangelism is forbidden. Christians and seekers are highly secretive about their faith or interest in Christianity to avoid being arrested, to avoid being beaten, tortured, and kidnappings are routine for Christians in Afghanistan. Access to Bibles are limited because there are no bookstores and obviously no open churches in Afghanistan. 
fibers are available through electronic networks or if they're smuggling. VOM, Voice of the Martyr, Crips, Afghan, Christian, providing Bibles, TV and radio broadcasts, discipleship training, frontline worker support, and other forms of practical and spiritual assistance with a special focus on outreach. I just want to thank the persons that be that invited me on this platform. The opportunity of being a part of this group, reading and learning of things that I would probably would not have researched about how we take life and the things that we have so freely without thinking or what we take as freedom, it's death to many. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. says, no one is free until everyone is free. Amaya Angelo had said, do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, offering, do better. Now, Lord, consider the threats of the Christians in Afghanistan and enable your servant to speak your word with great boldness, whoever you may send to the land. Show your presence, O Lord, and stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Acts 4, 29 30. Pray for the protection and provision of local leaders and their family. Psalm 9070, we pray, Lord God, let the favor of the Lord, our God, be upon the Christians who labor in Afghanistan and establish the work of your hands in them and through them to the outreach of many. Establish the work of your hands, O Lord. We pray, Lord God, that you will send in harvesters, send in laborers, sending not just laborers of work, but sending those who will contribute to the building of your church, monetary contrib contribution, strategist, Lord God, planning specialist, God. Father God, thank you for abundance and everything, safety and prosperity to each life and the loved ones, the church and family members. Let favor surround your people who bring the gospel to those in Afghanistan, like a shield, Lord God. Second prayer point, pray that our brothers and sisters will persevere through difficulties and persecution. Galatians 6, 9 says, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap our... God, that our brothers and sisters will look to the Lord from whom their strength and help comes from. Send help to have our brothers and sisters stand firm. Strength in time of weariness. For at the proper time, God, we will certainly reap a harvest if we do not give in. We thank you, Father God, for releasing your angels to protect your people doing your work in Afghanistan. You, O oh Lord, will perfect the work that you have started in Afghanistan. Point three and five, I will group because they seem to be related to the same thing. So I'll go to point four. Prayer, pray for believers who gather in house fellowships or prayer, encouragement and worship. Hebrews 13, 16 says, Father of light, we thank you that our brothers and sisters will not neglect doing good and share with each other to encourage and build a community of faith for which such sacrifices God is pleased. Thank you, Lord, that you'll give signs to prayers, pray, so that our brothers and sisters will rejoice and continue to be hopeful as a joyful heart is good medicine. Let there be no broken spirit because of the lazy Father God. Show signs and wonders to answer prayers in Afghanistan, in Jesus' name. Three says, Pray for ongoing Bible translation work as well as radio, TV, and social media ministries. And five says, pray for greater access to God's word through translation 
into every language and for every tribal group. Matthew 9, which my sister just um, said, when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed, they were forsaken, they were helpless, they were persecuted like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Lord, we ask for workers to strategize. We ask for workers to plan. We ask for workers to not just work in the harvest, but be financial sustainers and backers for funding of the gospel in Afghanistan. You said we should ask. You said we should ask. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I do apologize. I do, I do apologize. You said we should ask for the nation and you would give it to us. We ask for Afghanistan. We ask for Afghanistan. We ask for Afghanistan. Give us Afghanistan, lest we die. Let our voice go before us with a mighty sound, like your voice that leads your army. Let your army hear your cry. Let the voice of the Lord break every resistance, remove every bar, every legal, cultural, religious, and otherwise persecution of matters, God. We thank you, Lord God. We ask for the nations, give us Afghanistan. And the final point is, pray for the frontline workers involved in evangelism, discipleship and house churches. Psalm 20, may the Lord answer you when you are in distress. Afghanistan. May the name of God of Jacob protect you, Christian workers in Afghanistan. May God send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support for your family. May he remember all your sacrifices of preaching and underground reaching of many who need to hear the word of the Lord. May God give you the desires of your heart and make all your plans for Afghanistan be, perf be performed and be materialized, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We pray for the leaders, church founders, Christians, that the spirit of the Lord would rest upon them, on our brothers and sisters, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel of might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord in Afghanistan, those who labor in Afghanistan. Joel 2 11 says, Seal these prayers and shake the territories of Afghanistan so that a new and fresh release of your power of the Holy Spirit of boldness will come upon your people to speak your word, to free the captives, and populate your kingdom in Afghanistan. Shake your shake what needs to be shaken for your glory and honor. Shake the building of your kingdom. Fill the buildings of your kingdom. Shake everything that can be shaken and fill with the Holy Spirit so that the laborers in your vineyard will continue to speak your word in and out of season, in boldness, in love, in Afghanistan. We seal our prayers with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that because we have spoken your word, your angels are executing your spoken words father god yes, yes, in yes. afghanistan now yes, yes. and forevermore amen amen amen, amen. thank you sister arterine is this a sonalva sonalva online yes i am here thank you pastor david i'm gonna ask you to share a little bit about iran and pray for iran i'm gonna bring it on the screen the information about Iran. Okay, thank you. Um, greetings, brothers and sisters. I'm praying for Iran. And um, the des designation is a restricted country. I have it here in front of me too, Pastor David. That's right. Um, yeah, yeah, man. I understand. I bring it up because of other persons I want, I want to see. 
That's okay. I plan to run straight. I'm, I'm sorry. So, I, I don't mean to slow you down. That's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I ran on their desk. I can't talk. Destination is restricted. <laughs> the overview, the Islamic Revolution of 1979, led by Ayatollah Khomeini, Khomeini, created the words only Shiite Islamic bureaucracy and profoundly changed every aspect of life in Iran. Today, many of those who committed their lives to Islam, Islamic rule, are filled with despair. This disillusion, disillusion. I can't talk today. Excuse me. Help me, Holy Spirit. This, this and lose it. Help me, somebody. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm sorry. This and lose. Okay. Help me, Lord. Let me just. Disillusion. Disillusion. Thank you. Disillusionment. Father, give me the words. May my words come out, Lord. Holy Spirit. Guide me here. Thank you, Jesus. Has opened new doors for the gospel, which is sweeping across the nation via Christian media and bold evangelists in Iran's growing house church movement. However, the government continues its attempts to thwart this move of God. Christian leaders and pastors are often arrested, tortured, and imprisoned, and their families are harassed. Some left with no other option, options choose to flee the country. Major religions. More than 97% of Iranians are identified by the government as Muslims, but a significant segment of the population has abandoned Islam, and many have come to faith in Christ. Persecutor. Christians are persecuted by government authorities, which have a network of information informants in each city. Family, friends, and community members are also persecuted Christians, especially when news of a conversion becomes public. What it means to follow Christ in Iran. The Iranian government is among the most oppressive regiments in the world. It is illegal to leave Islam, and Christians face the constant threat of imprisonment and being falsely charged with acting against national security. For owning Bibles or even talking about Christ, Christians are routinely fired from their jobs and it is difficult, and it is difficult for a known believer to find a job or rent a home. Many Christians gather in secret fellowships and receive teaching through Christian media smuggled into the country and through broadcast media. Several Christians are currently imprisoned and many others are under house arrest awaiting sentencing. Their access to Bibles. It is illegal to own, print, import, or distribute Bibles there. Since, since they are so difficult to obtain, Bibles are treasured by Iranian believers. Few have their own copy of God's word. The voice of uh, the martyr work, VOM provides encouragement, support, and training for former prisoners as they rebuild their lives. We also provide um, discipleship and leadership training for current and future Christian leaders. DOM is actively involved in distributing God's word to believers inside Iran. And my prayer points for the country and persecuted Christians that we are to pray for house church leaders who have lost a spouse this year. Pray for God's comfort for them and their family. Christian students who are kicked out of their university, pray that God gives them divine favor that they can continue school. And if they must leave their country to continue school, that God provides provision for them to do so. Ibrahim Norozi, who is an inter internal exile, who is an internal exile after being released from prison in 2019, 
pray for this brother that God um, also provides him provision for his safety, that he covers him under his wings um, since he has been released from prison. Training and equipping, pray for training and equipment of house church leaders in Iran. Pray that they are continuing to continue to raise up new believers, to raise up Christians who have received Christ. Training and wisdom and guidance from the current leaders in that country and that the uh, people will come for training who have received Jesus Christ as their savior. Those who are smuggling print and digital scriptures to believers in Iran, pray that they are doing the, they are the hands and feet of Jesus there, that they're smuggling the Bibles in to do the work of God. When we hear the word smuggle, it a lot of times has a negative connotation, but in Jesus Christ's name, smuggling these Bibles to edify the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Christian prisoners who were released from jail last year at the outset of the pandemic, pray again God's provision over them. They find a home, they find jobs, that they are healthy and whole in Jesus Christ's name. Pray for the children of Christian families will stand strong while attending Muslim schools. Um, you know, these children are attending schools. Again, the 97% of the faith is Muslim, that God send his angels of protection around them while they're in school, that they're not ostracized, that they're not bullied or, or uh, beat up or any danger, hurt or harm should come near them. We're praying a shield of protection around these uh, beautiful children. Muslims who are leaving Islam and accepting Christ. And we know the torture, the persecution of Muslims receiving Jesus Christ and pray for, for them to be safe. Pray that God just sends Archangel uh, Michael and angels to protect these Christians who are leaving Islam and that the leaders of Islam repent and their hardened hearts are turned from stone to flesh in Jesus Christ's name. In Jesus Christ's name, for the release of Christians who are still in prison, that they are not, uh, they are suffering, you know, uh, being in prison, Paul and Silas, when they were bound in prison, they started praising and worshiping the Lord and the chains mm -hmm. fell off mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they were set free. So may a divine uh, miracle happen Amen. with these prisoners to walk Amen. by these guards and they are set free in Jesus Christ's name. No harm will come for them. They will oh, witness man. in prison. They will be the hands and feet of Jesus to others. Protect yeah. them, Lord, in Jesus Christ's name for such a time as this. We oh, thank man. you, Father. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor David. Amen. 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 Um, I read that thing about, um, I read that thing, I heard, heard a documentary about is um Christians in, in Iran that some of the women when they turn to Christ from from Islam that they 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 the law allows them allows them to be punished by, by including things like rape and persecution and beating and um there's some some, some of the sisters who are saying listen we don't care we're gonna serve Christ no matter what the cost we sometimes take it for granted the the, the gospel. But the the the, the for them is rubber rubber meets in the road. Amen. Amen. Man. Amen. It, 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 was Dr. Marie able to come on? No, that's okay then. She told me she had another meeting today. I'm gonna ask Sister Connie to share about Liberia and lead us in prayer about it. Hola. Um, hello. Uh, it's been, it's good to be back um, between, among um, fellow believers and that I haven't heard from from a while. So um, Liberia um, has pretty much some of the same things that you've all been describing. And I'm sending something to Pastor David that would give you a little video clip of how and, and why basically the, the statistics, if you need to know them, of, of 
of religions there, but I would say um, looking at all the research is somewhere in the middle. So I would say it was between 50, 50 Islam and Christian. Um, so I want to take all of my time to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you first as thanksgivers for being our Abba, Daddy, who provides for all of our needs according to your riches and glory. Lord, right now, help us to be one body under one King. Lord, we come united knowing you're a merciful God who loves his sheep and they know your voice. Lord, you see what is happening to your children in the world. Liberia was begun from the people of your heart, the least of these, slaves. You see your people persecuted for leaving Islam to go to, Christi to, go to Christianity, especially women and children, mostly by the, ma the male of the house that kills the wife and the children. Um, Lord, as the Apostle Paul set, spoke about in 1 Corinthians 12, um, we want to use your word just as Jesus did in the wilderness. Um, so as he said in 1 Corinthians 12, we are one body. Help us as a church realize when your word states to overcome, for the body is not one member, but many. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I am not part of the body. It is not for this reason, any the less a part of the body. Lord, we stand united against the enemy of our souls to cease persecuting Christians in Liberia and around the world. Satan, be gone. It is finished. You must leave right now in Jesus Christ's name. Lord, our prayer is that you remind your people, um, just as the Apostle Paul gave us instructions, um, to use the weapons that you have already provided us. Satan cannot get around them. So this prayer is not just for the people being persecuted, but it is also for the persecutors. So we pray this prayer. to prepare themselves for the battle ahead. By faith, they put on the of truth. You are the sovereign God who knows everything going on in the world at all times. You know both the strengths and the weaknesses of every person. Lord, you know their breaking point and you have promised not to allow them to be tempted, be able to bear. The truth about us, Lord, is that we are new creatures. They are new creatures and they have been set free from the power of sin, I pray. They are indwelt with your Holy Spirit who will guide them and warn them when danger is near. They are your children and nothing, even death, can separate them from your love. The truth is that you have a purpose for them every day, someone to encourage and someone to love. Next, Lord. We want them to put on the breastplate of righteousness. By faith, help them strap on this breastplate to guard their heart and emotions. They will not be allowed, they will not allow their heart to attach itself to anything that is impure. They will not allow their emotions to rule in their decisions. They will set them on what is right, what is good, and what is just. They will live today and every day by what is true in your word, not what they feel. Lord, next they put on the sandals of the gospel of peace. Let all of us be available to you. Send us all where you will. Guide us to those who need encouragement or physical help of some kind and use all of us to solve conflicts wherever they may arise anywhere in the world and make us a calming presence in every circumstance. Lord, we will not be hurried or rushed because all of our schedules are in your hands. We will not leave a trail of tension or apprehension. We will leave tracks of peace and stability everywhere we go. 
which is exactly why we have people on the field as missionaries to do that very thing. We now take up our, they now take up the shield of faith, Lord. Um, let their faith be in you and you alone, the sinner and the saint. Apart from you, nobody can do anything. But with you, all things are possible. No temptation can penetrate your protecting hand. They will not be afraid, for you are going with them through this day. When they are tempted, they will claim victory out loud ahead of time, for you have promised victory to those who walk in obedience to your word. So by faith, we claim victory now because we know there are even more fiery darts as we pray for all these nations. The good news is you already know every single one of those darts, what they are, where they're going, and how to escape. We ask that you remind everybody that each time we open our mouth, that we do not fight against flesh and blood. We are not fighting against a person. We are fighting against Satan. And remind all of us that we're in heavenly realms at the right hand of you, Father, who, with Jesus, who intercedes for everybody. Lord, by faith, we're helping them put on the helmet of salvation. You know Satan is out there bombarding all those minds of all the people who are prosecuting the Christians day and night with evil thoughts, doubt, and fear. And his hope is for them to get off track and that we're all fighting each other, the flesh and blood that we're warned to get, that we're warned about. And with everybody fighting, Satan has full reign in the heavenly realm to wreak havoc for our world. Lord, help all of us keep our eyes fixed on you and the truth, the only truth that you bless us with, which is your living word. Lord, help them that helmet that will protect their mind. They may feel the impact of Satan's attacks, but nothing can penetrate this helmet if we put on the armor that's already been given to us. We help them choose to stop every single impure and negative thought at the door of their mind. Help them elect to take every thought captive. And I'm asking this for those who are killing their own wives and children for something they don't even know. They don't even know. Lord, help them take up the sword of the spirit, which is your word. And we thank you for this precious gift that we take for granted of your word. It's strong and powerful and able to defeat even the strongest of Satan's onslaughts. Your word says that we are free from the power of sin. Your word says he that is in all of us is so much greater than he who is in the world. So by faith, we all take up the strong and powerful sword of the spirit, united as one bride that you're coming back to get, which is to help it, to help it defend us in time of attack, comfort everyone in time of sorrow, and teach everyone in time of meditation and prevail against the power of the enemy on behalf of others who need the truth, others who may have been brainwashed by someone other than you. And Lord, we know it is your will that for not one person to perish. So Lord, we pray 
for those who are for those who are persecuting, just as we pray for those who are being persecuted. So we go now rejoicing that you have chosen us, us as Christians, throughout the, the whole world. Um, oh gosh, sorry. Um, you have chosen us to represent you to this lost and dying world, all the missionaries, everybody, anywhere who's promoting the word, your word, Lord, protect them. And may others see Jesus when they look at us. And may Satan and his hosts shudder as your power is made manifest in all those around our country and our world. It's in Jesus Christ's name. I trust and pray. Amen. 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 Um, we're, we're with us, Pastor Emmanuel. He's from, he's from um, Pakistan, and um, I didn't have, I didn't have him started to share here, but I'm going to ask him to share in a second to unmute his mic. But before I do, I want to tell Connie thank you very much for sharing with us about Liberia and praying for Liberia. Um, thank you, Sister Connie. Really appreciate it. Yes. Thank you, Connie. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Bless you, sis. Yes, I just learned about it. Actually, when I got in Mexico, I learned about Liberia. So, hey, you never know. Amen. Well, um, Pastor Emmanuel, I'm going to ask you to unmute your mic. I know it's very late for you. I think it's in the morning. Um, if you can just share a little bit about what's happening with the, the young ladies at, at, the, at the factories all day. They're, they're being forced to convert to Islam and uh, other things. What's happening in, in Pakistan? I can give you about five minutes to share. Pass it, man. I'll put to you. Thank you. Pass it, man. Well, well, that, 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 that one here. All right, I'm going to invite Sister Claudine Galloway Williams to share about North Korea and to pray for, um, for, 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 for them. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, North Korea was once a thriving center of Christian worship. Pyongyang, um, the capital, was known as the Jerusalem of the East in the early 1900s because of its 2,000 plus churches. Decades of rule by the oppressive regime currently led by Kim Jong-un has forced Christians to worship in underground settings. The communist inspired dictatorship is founded upon, upon Jushi a distinctly North Korean religious ideology that requires worship and subservience to the Kim family. Christianity is considered subversively opposed. Anyone discovered to be a Christian or to express any interest in Christ or the Bible is considered an enemy of the state. The gospel is still proclaimed in North Korea through various creative means, including shortwave radio and bold evangelists who risk their lives to smuggle Bibles and discipleship resources into the country. So major religions, the North Korean government allows for no religious freedom, requiring all North Kore Koreans to follow the Jushi religion. Persecutor, if discovered, Christians face harsh persecution from the government and from members of the community who are required to serve as government informants. Even those who are aware of Christian activity but do not report it to the government are punished as enemies of the regime. What it means to follow Christ in North Korea. 
Christians are sent to prison and labor camps where they are starved, overworked, and tortured. The government's requirement that all North Koreans act as informants applies even to families as children are taught to spy on their parents from a young age. Therefore, North Korean Christians must be extremely careful in what they say, what they do, and even how they pray. When a Christian is discovered, the government punishes the entire family in order to incentivize reporting. Despite the threat of persecution and heavy social pressure, Christians in North Korea hold firmly to their faith. Christian and secular analysts estimate that about 30,000 Christians are currently suffering in prison and labor camps. Access to Bibles. Owning a Bible or even just portions of scripture is extremely risky in North Korea. Nevertheless, bold Christians work to bring God's word to the North Korean people, few of whom have ever had access to scripture because of the regime's unceasing efforts to restrict access. Most of North Korea's underground Christians have found that memorization is the safest and most effective way to keep God's word. Voice of the Martyrs work. Voice of the Martyrs provides Bibles via creative smuggling operations, broadcast the gospel over special I radio thought, network, and ministers, and ministers to North Koreans wherever they are found. So the prayer, rest, prayer request for North Korea. Um, Pray for the estimated 30,000 Christians imprisoned in concentration camps. So Heavenly Father God, we pray for our brothers and sisters imprisoned in these concentration camps, Father. Lord, we um, pray for the Holy Spirit to move powerfully among them, Father God. And we pray for your angels to walk amongst these prisons and strengthen and help the believers there, Father God. We pray, Father, for healing for their bodies from beatings and from neglect, Father. We pray for healing. We pray for provision for food for them each day, Father God. And most of all, Father, we pray for their release from prison, merciful Father. Lord, that while they are in prison, Father, we pray that your spirit will be so, so strong amongst them, Lord, and that your your presence will be so so strong amongst them lord that they would radiate radiate your light and radiate your truth even though they may not be able to speak it father god and that all the people that work in that prison and all those other people know that there is something different about these people there is something different about christians that their god is the true god Merciful Father, Lord, I pray that they will not lose heart, Father God, and that they would not uh, turn away from their faith, even though they suffer so much, Father God. Lord, I pray that you would just give them an abundance of power and strength and faith. And I pray especially for the ch their children who are imprisoned with them, and their family members, as the children grow up in prison. Father God, I pray, Lord, that they would not look down on their the faith of their parents, Father. And I pray that they would not harbor any anger or um anything against their parents for being in that prison father god i pray instead lord that you would uh, unite them in love and father i pray that your grace will be on them and their families for their entire families father god in jesus name lord we pray for north korean women who are trafficked into northeastern china father god we pray for their release from this slavery father we pray father for um that they would find pay, favor with people around them to help them escape, Father God. And Lord, we pray that they will find their way. We pray that good, honest people will help them to get to South Korea to find their freedom, Father God. And Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray for North Koreans who receive audio Bibles. Lord, we pray that they will grow in their faith, Lord. We pray that they're able to, um, I just pray that these audio Bibles, everything, all the technology would work correctly and that they're able to absorb everything that they hear and they learn 
Father, I pray that they will just continue to grow deeper in their faith, Lord, deeper in their knowledge and understanding of the Lord Jesus Christ and of the God they serve. And Father God, I pray for Christian workers who smuggle Bibles and other Christian resources into North Korea. Father, we pray for your covering over their activities, your protection over um over their coming and their goings, Lord, over the, the, the Bibles that they have, where they store it, Lord, I pray your protection over them, Father God. And Lord, I pray that they, in, in, in all that they're doing, Father God, and how they smuggle these Bibles, Father, that they will be as shrewd as serpents, Father, but as innocent as doves as they work, Lord. And Father God, I pray for the success of Bible smuggling efforts by air and sea, Father God. I pray that as many of these Bibles as possible get to those who hunger and thirst for, for righteousness, Father God, who eagerly want to know who God is and seek him, Father. And Lord, we pray that Voice of the Martyrs radio broadcast in the North Korean dialect will reach as many people as possible with the gospel. Father, I know that it is difficult for people to invite other people to listen and, and to, to even mention that they have um, that they are listening to these um, broadcasts, Father, or listening to any other station apart from uh, the, the government station, Father. But I pray, Lord, that you would um, guide them through the Holy Spirit to those who would be, um, who will um, sh listen to these broadcasts and not report them to the authorities, Father. And I pray for protection for them as they listen. And Father, we pray for North Korean defectors who are training to be missionaries. Merciful Father, I can't imagine after escaping North Korea to voluntarily go back in there and, and share the gospel. Father God, I pray, Lord, that you will strengthen them and that they will be strong in the spirit. Father, that I pray that you will give them the grace to learn and to and to to learn everything they need father and be able to make it into north korea and share the gospel father god and lastly father i just pray for the unification of north korea and south and south korea that there'll be one nation one nation the korea that you formed and the man-made um boundary lines that were were put in place that divided the country will be removed father lord i just pray all these things in the name of the lord jesus christ amen Man, thank you, Sister Claudia. Appreciate it. Amen. Um, Sister Claudine Umber. Before I go, go go there, is Brother is Pastor Emmanuel Bashir on? Can you unmute your mic, please, sir? Pastor Bashir, it's very late. In, I think it's early morning now, so I'm sure it's very tired. But um, so, amen. Then our sister Claudine Humble to share from about Somalia a little bit and to pray from, from the handout. Okay. Is All right, thank you. Most Somalis believe that to be Somali is to be Muslim. So those who come to faith in Christ are accused of rejecting not only their religion, but also their nationality. After years of drought and civil war, more Somalis live outside Somalia than within its borders. And Somalis often take their Islamist cultural norms with them wherever they go. Therefore, those who faithfully serve Christ or convert from Islam in Somali communities throughout the world face severe persecution, regardless of national laws. Even so, the dispersation of Somali people has also created unique opportunities to reach them with the gospel. Somalis are more reachable and open than ever before. And many have chosen to follow Christ, including some who are willing to reach out to other Somalis at any cost. Major religions, nearly all Somalis are Sunni Muslims with especially radicalized Islam, Islamist views. Persecutor, the Al-Shabaab, terrorist organization and other Islamist groups persecute Christians, as do the government, communities, and families. What it means to follow Christ in Somalia. There are no church buildings in Somalia, 
and Christians must exercise extreme care when meeting in groups. It is strictly illegal to convert or evangelize. Christians are actively pursued, and when discovered, they are immediately killed. To be killed by Al Shabaab or family members than to be imprisoned by the government. Access to Bibles. Bibles are illegal and extremely dangerous to own. Most believers access digital versions on their phones or other or digital devices. The Voice of the Martyrs equips secret believers and supports those who share their faith inside Somalia. Voice of the Martyrs also supports media efforts that reach inside the country. Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity to be able to lift up to you, cry out to you on behalf of our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world. And King Jesus, you taught us to pray in Matthew 6 and verse 12, that forgive and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So Lord, as we are interceding on behalf of the nations, the body of Christ globally, all the brothers and sisters in Christ who are being persecuted around the world, we ask that you forgive us our sins. And we release to you by faith right now, God, any unforgiveness that we have in our hearts because we don't want the posture of our hearts to hinder our intercession. We don't want any blockage of the blessings that we're speaking over our brothers and sisters in Christ. So we ask you, God, right now by faith, any of us who are joining together in prayer to lift up these persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ, here now are those who'll be praying along with the recording. We pray that we receive from you the grace to forgive. We let go of anyone that we're holding anything against, any bitterness or resentment. You're muted, Sister Claudie. Unmute, Sister Claudie. Two. Hello? Hello? Can hear you now. Yes, we can hear you now. You are muted. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So you didn't hear me praying? We heard part of it and then you stopped. About the last oh. 50 seconds we missed, about 50 seconds ago. Oh, I think that was because somebody was calling. Let me see if there's a way to that. Um... You can't stop it. Just go ahead. Just yeah. Come. Okay. Okay. Technology. So wonderful when it works. Okay. Lord God, continue to intercede for the body of Christ in Somalia and around the world. We're especially lifting up to you the brothers and sisters in Christ who are being persecuted for their faith in you. Hebrews 4, verse 14 through 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our confession. And that's what we're praying for ourselves and for our brothers and sisters in Christ in those countries where they're not free to worship. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. We thank you, God, that you sympathize with us. You were tempted at all points as we are, yet without sin. So let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So we thank you, God for your mercy. We thank you for your grace upon our brothers and sisters in Christ. 
We lift up their requests that they have sent in, that there will be the establishment of open, visible churches in Somalia. We know, God, that that takes extreme boldness. So we apply this word from Hebrews 4, verse 14 through 16 over them, that you would give them the boldness that they need. Hallelujah. To live on purpose for you, even in the midst of extreme persecution. Matthew 5, verse 10 through 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed. We declare them blessed. We know that their family, their family, their friends, their communities have cursed them because they profess faith in you. But we join together in the mighty name of Jesus and declare that they are blessed when people insult them when people persecute them and falsely say all kinds of evil against them because of you. We pray for supernatural joy, that they will rejoice and be glad because great is their reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you, King Jesus. Those Old Testament prophets, God, we thank you that we as your New Testament church, have this privilege, this duty to lift up those across the globe who are not able to worship you freely without persecution. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We pray for a media ministry to reach Somali people. Yes, Lord an international ministry to, meet the, to reach the Somalis that live there within their borders and those who live abroad, as we just learned that more live abroad than within their homeland. We pray for secret believers who are unable to fellowship with other believers. I cannot imagine that, God. We pray the blessing from Matthew 5, verse 44, that they would be able to love their enemies, those who are um, holding them, withholding them the, the privilege, the right to be able to worship, that they would love their enemies and they would pray for those who persecute them. We pray in Jesus Christ's name for Somali believers to be able to remain in their homeland and to evangelize their country. Give them the strength that they need to be able to do this, God. First Peter three, verse 14. But if they suffer for what is right, they are blessed. We declare them blessed, that they will not fear the threats. They will not be frightened. They will go boldly in faith to witness to their family members, friends, acquaintances, those who are in their circles of influence and even beyond Father God, serve as missionaries to their people. We ask you, Lord, to soften the hearts of the government leaders towards the Christians. You're the only one who has the power to transform a human heart. So we pray for softened hearts, we pray the blessing of Ezekiel 36, 26, that you give them a new heart and a new spirit, that you take out the heart of stone and give them hearts of flesh that are responsive to the touch of your Holy Spirit working on these government leaders. We pray for safety of the believers for facing persecution from family, family, neighbors, terrorists, and the government. The blessing, Father God, over them that they have divine protection to know that you are always with them. First Peter four, verse 14, that if they are insulted because of the name of Christ, that they are blessed for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon them. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, providing them with divine protection in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for Somali Christian leaders, who risked their life to share the gospel throughout Eastern Africa. The blessing of James 1 verse 12, blessed are they who persevere under trial 
because having stood the test, they receive the crown of life that you, Lord, have promised for those who love you. We thank you because of their great love for you and their love for their people that they will share you, God. They will share you, God, with other Somalis and beyond their borders into Eastern Africa. We pray for the families of Somali believers who have been killed for their faith that you would comfort their hearts, God. The blessing of Psalm 34, verse 18, that you are close to the brokenhearted and you save us when we're crushed in spirit. So we thank you, God, for strengthening them in the innermost part of their spirit. Strengthen them, Lord, as they grieve the loss of their loved ones. And we pray for unity among Somali believers and those working with them. We pray that they will indeed be united in Christ. The blessing of Ephesians 4, verse 4 through 6, that there is one body and one spirit, just as we have been called in one hope of our calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in us all. So we thank you, God, for the unity that we feel. And it's because of your Holy Spirit that we are united with them. We stand with them, not only today, but throughout the year, we pray that you will compel us, Holy Spirit, and we will be sensitive to your guidance to lift up the body of Christ globally, especially those who suffer persecution. We pray for supernatural covering for them, a shield around them from danger seen and unseen. Psalm 91, verse 11, that you command your angels, you the commander of angel armies, that you command your angels concerning our brothers and sisters in Christ to guard them in all of their ways. Blind the eyes of the enemies that would come to try to kill them, God. Their safety and protection, we lift up to you. We entrust them into your loving hands. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Claudia. Numbers. You're welcome. Again, Amen. Again, I must, Thank you. I must apologize for us going a little late, but we needed to pray for all the errors that we had listed. Um, did we pray for China? Or did I, I remember hearing Peter share, no, but did no, someone no, pray for that, That's Pastor Steve job. Oh, okay. 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 Pastor Steve, we can't. I'll meet your mic. Amen. 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 I'll bring it up on the screen. Yeah, man. Thank you. While you while you're searching, even if you want to do another shout out for Pastor Emmanuel, if he's able to unmute, if he's able to unmute his mic, Pastor Emmanuel, are you there? If not, I, I, I'm going to invite him to share on Sunday at our church. Okay, okay. For the overview of China, it says revival and rapid church growth have characterized China's churches since the 1990s. About 130 million Chinese are Christians, most of whom worship in illegal house churches. Only about 30 million are affiliated with the Free Self Patriotic Movement, TSPM, which is the only legal church. And it's controlled by the communist government. Despite continuous pressure and oppression from the communist government, House church leaders refused to compromise the gospel by joining government controlled churches. Because of decades of government oppression, few Chinese Christians have their own Bible or access to the discipleship literature. Influenced by their aesthetic, atheistic government, many Chinese are non religious. About 20% are Buddhists and another 20% practice folk religion, and 9% are Christians. The main persecutor is the government, and I think we heard that today while Peter spoke. 
In the early 2000s, many unregistered churches enjoyed some freedom from government intrusion and harassment despite their illegal status. However, in recent years, restrictive religious regulations and persecution have increased significantly. Hundreds of churches have been forced to close. Pastors and churches members have been arrested or detained and, their online and the online sale of Bibles has been prohibited. A campaign to remove crosses from churches continues in one province. The government has installed more than 170 million facial recognition cameras, many in or near churches to identify those who attend worship services. Christian leaders are under intense pressure to join the government controlled TSPM. In general, the farther Christians are from Beijing, the more freedom they have. Authorities pressure Christian parents by refusing their children an education. And even the grandchildren of Christians are often denied schooling. It is illegal to disciple anyone younger than 18. Christians are often charged with participating in cults or with other spurious accusations such as bad business practices or intent to undermine the state. Access to Bibles, those living in rural areas have little access to Bibles and usually cannot afford them even when they're available. Bibles can be purchased at some bookstores operated by the TSPM, but rarely in significant numbers. The Bibles that Voice of the Martyrs and other frontier missions organizations distribute each year have only begun to meet the massive need. So VM, VOM work, VOM distributes Bibles in at least, in the least reached, most challenged, challenging areas of China. We distribute children's Bibles, which are illegal, as well as study Bibles for Christian, Christian leaders, which are both illegal and expensive. We also support groups that are reaching Muslims in China. So Father, as we continue to pray, even as we pray for the Christians in China, Lord, we say, oh God, that we'll continue to protect, you know, the children of those who, who profess the gospel, the good news of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And especially for those, Lord, who are forbidden to attend Sunday school. Friends, when Jesus said, you know, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. So, Father, we know that you're the God who will make a way where there seems to be no way. So, Father, therefore, the children who are therefore exposed because their, their parents, you know, are, are out there laboring for the gospel, we pray your divine protection of them right now. Pray, pray that you protect their going out and their coming in. And that, Lord, even for... You know, those who, who, who will dare to set up seminaries and therefore run the risk of, of, of being controlled by the government. And Father, if not, they'll be forced to close. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, that divine intervention, the Lord, you'll, div, you'll, you'll intervene divinely. For Lord, you rule in the affairs of men. And Father, we pray, oh God, that these churches will not be closed, but Lord, they will remain open so that, Lord, the goodness of the gospel can be heard and therefore be spread. And Father, we will pray for the, that church. Lord, that church is probably not, not stated by name, but Father, we know, God, there's no distance in the realm of the spirit. And God, we, 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 we understand, Lord, that there was a church that recently underwent, you know, a lot of, of, of police interrogation. Father, we pray, oh God, that you will strengthen, Lord, even those Lord, who were physically abused, and that, Lord, you shall continue to strengthen them, that, Lord, they'll not be weary in well-doing, but, God, they shall, Lord, recognize that, Lord, they are sold out to you, and even as when Paul said in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 1, that, that he's not his own, that we'll recognize that we are not our own, and that, Lord, the church, Lord, that, that even underwent the persecution, that, that the, the body, the members there, will be recognizing that they are not their own, but they're actually sold out to Christ. And therefore, even as Paul said, he's a debtor. He's a debtor, debtor to the Greeks, that, Lord, they'll recognize that, that they're debtors, oh God, to those who need to hear the good news of the gospel. And Father, we don't know the names, but, Lord, we speak in the realm of the Spirit. So we pray for brothers P and V. You know, that, Lord, they will continue to put their trust in God's provision as they enter full-time ministry. 
So God, we pray, God, even just like Nehemiah, when Lord, he, he was consumed by building your house, that you supernaturally, Lord, made a way of, prov of, of providing. Thank you, God, that Lord, you shall be the God of the provision, the God who is able to provide, the God who is able to make a way where there seems to be no way. So Father, we just pray that you'll bring all the resources, Lord, not only to, to brothers P and V, but for all those, Lord, who labor in building your house in China. And the Lord, even as we continue to pray, we pray for those, Lord, who remain faithful to Christ. The Lord, they'll not be distracted by what happens on the left nor on the right, but they'll look to the God who sits in the north. And Lord, they don't have to look behind them, even though, Lord, they, 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 there's a tendency for persecution. But Lord, we declare that goodness and mercy shall follow after them all the days of their life. And they indeed shall dwell in the house of the Lord. And that no matter what, Lord, as they have put their hands to the plow, they will not look back. And God, we pray even for the frontline workers, you know, those who are seeking to bless the persecuted Christians. Father, we pray. Lord, we know that you're able to make seeing eyes blind. So, Father, in Jesus' name, intervene, intervene, intervene supernaturally, oh God. Supernatural intervention, we declare, oh God. So that, Lord, they'll be able to, to, to bless even the members of the persecuted church. So, God, in those who are in the front line, thank you, oh God, that that you are the Lord, their Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, their provision. And because of that, we declare that they shall never be in want. And that, Lord, you shall supernaturally provide all the financial, the, uh, provide for their financial needs. So that, Lord, they'll be able to, 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 to execute, Lord, the, the plans of the Lord. And that, that many shall come to know you. And, Father, we pray for unity among Christians throughout China. You know, Father, as we heard when Peter was sharing today, that the objective of the government is to bring everybody into oneness, but oneness under the Communist Party. So, Father, know that we understand that. We say we bring it to naught in the name of Jesus. We say, yes, there's unity and oneness, but oneness under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Oneness under the Holy Spirit. That, Lord, your truth and only the truth of the Lord shall prevail. So, Father, we say, let there be unity among the Christians in China, oh God. But that, Lord, that unity shall come because they stand on God's word and what God's word says. And, Father, we pray for the Christians who will bring the love and truth of, of Christ, Lord, to a dying world. Father, strengthen that they may recognize that the work that you have given them, Lord, is good work, good work, good work. So strengthen their hands for this good work, oh God. That, Lord, they'll continue to labor, that they'll continue to labor, 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 Lord that their hearts will be towards God, God's people. For you know, as John 3, 16 says, for God so loved. So Father, we pray, O oh God, that Lord, they'll be motivated by that, O oh God. They'll be motivated by that instructed, Lord, that we should spread the gospel and it can only be motivated by love. And Father, we pray, Lord, that members of the early reign church will find peace among ongo um, among ongoing, amid ongoing persecution. Father, may your hedge of protection, Lord, continue to surround them. Surround them with your grace, Lord, surround them with your love. And Father, even for the few house, house churches that are still meeting, Father, we know, Lord, that house churches is that principle. But the Lord, they don't have to be doing it in hiding. But Father, we pray divine protection, divine protection upon them right now. And the Lord, they shall stand fast like Jehoshaphat and see the salvation of the Lord as they continue to lift up in praise. Thank you, O oh God that you're able to do this. Thank you, Lord, that, that, Lord, you shall surround them with the peace of the Lord, which passes all understanding, for that peace comes from your throne of grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, I, I just, thank you Brother Steve. I just remember one time I went to a, a church, Pastor Dennis Church. There's a lady that was a missionary to China. She said that when they carry Bible into the country, through customs, the Lord would blind the eyes of the customs officer. So the, 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 the X-ray machine would show the Bible full of, the, the suitcase full of Bibles. And they never saw it. The customs officer never saw it. They get distracted with something, get with something when yeah. the person comes yeah. up. And so we we'll have to keep praying for, 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 um, for the churches on the persecution. Mm -hmm. I wanted to share too that we have some prayer partners that went on, they took the road to Emmaus retreat to China and they carried the, the Bibles as well as the other materials like the curriculum for the retreat. Mm -hmm. And 
not one of them had anything taken from them. This was probably about maybe five years ago. Uh, they went through the airport and were just praying the whole time and nothing was taken out of their suitcases, the Bibles or the retreat materials. And they I just had a glorious retreat. And, and that was in China. Amen. 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 Um, we're going to be praying about Pakistan now. We're going to ask Sister Corinne to just read. Okay. <laughs> Overview. Pakistani churches include believers from diverse faith backgrounds and a variety of denominations. All Pakistani Christians face difficulties, discrimination, and persecution because of their Christian identity. Some evangelicals take great risk to witness to Muslim, baptize converts, and gather them into churches. And many Christians are working tirelessly to equip, encourage, and educate Christian youth. Some Christians are bold in evangelizing and distributing God's word in radicalizing and radicalized Muslim neighborhoods and cities, some of which are homes to Islamic extremist group like the Taliban. Most Christians are treated as second-class citizens and are forced to work long hours in harsh jobs while being oppressed by schemes that keep them in bondage to their employers. Major religions. Approximately 98% of Pakistani are Sunni and Sufi Muslim. Pakistan underreports its Christian population, so accurate statistics are unavailable. However, there are roughly 4 million Pakistani Christians, which is nearly 2% of the nation's population. Persecutors. Both Muslim converts to Christ and Pakistani born into Christian families are persecuted by family members, community, Islamic extremist group, and the government. What it means to follow Christ in Pakistan. Because of Pakistan's blasphemy laws, Christians are at constant risk of being falsely accused of blaspheming Islam. The Quran or, or Muhammad and they receive harsh punishment when converted, when convicted, sorry. Street evangelism is illegal under Pakistan, is illegal under Pakistani law, and several bold evangel evangelists take advantage of the opportunity to share the gospel publicly. Many Christians live together in close neighborhoods known as colonies which provides a measure of security amid the widespread oppression. Still several large scale attacks have occurred in these areas in recent years, including some during Christmas. Most Christians are, tra are trapped in, this, in a cycle of poor education and poverty. Often the only jobs they can get among, among to indentured servitude in brick, um, um, climbed yeah. hills or as street sweepers or sewage workers. Christians have been in prison for years under the country's blasphemy laws, and many of those have been killed or forced to permanently flee the country upon release from prison. Access to Bibles. Bibles can be legally can can be legally printed and distributed in Pakistan. However, some Islamic group oppose the Bible. Those living in rural tribe, tribal and mountainous areas have little access to God's word and translation efforts are ongoing. Voice of the Matter work. Uh, VOM support outreach in difficult areas, training for local pastors and evangelists, and immediate aid to victims of persecution. Voice of the Matter also support Bible distribution in various formats with a focus on the most difficult areas. And over to Pastor Ferguson. Amen. Um, Pastor Bashir came on, but I'm not sure if it's Stephen because it's very it's, a, it's about two, three o'clock in the morning in Pakistan now, and he's been trust me, he's been very active. I, I sent some pictures. I don't know if anybody saw it. Some pictures of the break came on. That some uh, I sent what Pastor Peter sent to us uh, about the workers because. They, they have to work for uh, be underpaid. Um, there's a situation where some of the, some of the ladies, especially, 
uh, I mean, mean, mean pressure to convert to Islam or lose their jobs. And so one pastor who we work, we work with is trying to find ways to train some of those same ladies out to do graphics and other things that they can begin to earn without having to depend on this, the, 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 the established businesses. Um, so they have been undergoing tremendous. And you know, recently we had a issue of flood, floods that took place in Pakistan. Amen. So we're gonna pray. Father, we pray for the evangelists who face harassment when preaching the gospel. Pray for the widow and daughter of Suleiman and for others like them. For the frontline workers throughout Pakistan, for, for Bible translation work, focus on minority groups with little access to scripture. Pray that all Christians will have their own copy of the Bible. Pray for outreach efforts with minority groups like Hindus and Shia Muslims. Pray for Victims of recent church bombings who are still suffering from trauma and injury. Yes, Father. Father, we pray for the, the work of translating the gospel, of interpreting the gospel of God, that people can receive ministry of God. We ask to bless that activity. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I must apologize for going a little bit late, but I felt like we needed to cover all of that here that we did. So thank you very much. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn over to uh, to to Pastor Steve. You can share a little worship songs with us one or two, and then we're gonna close. Amen. 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 All right, one second. And while I do that, praise God. Amen. All right, let me know if you can see the screen. Yes. Oh, praise God. All right, I'll just share around. Just want to share one song. Um, today. One second. Hallelujah.
closing in a minute, but I just want to just show some pictures for those who did not see them of the what I got from Pakistan. A second. These are pictures of the brick, you know, where Pastor Peter went and he gave up Bibles. Um, so I can't find it. The brick kiln is where they, they make bricks oh. to sell back and the, 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 the Christians get the poorest jobs to work at. It's like a, um, they earn cents, US cents for the work. Amen. Try to see some more. That's Pastor Peter in the blue. The order left. Um, some people from Aras and other places had given money towards buying Bibles and it was sent to both Pastor Peter Show and to Pastor Emmanuel Bashir and they, they were they, they have been able to by and distribute Bibles in, written in Urdu. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for being here with us so long. I've gone a little longer than we normally go, go. But I felt we needed to spend time praying. 
when the person came to church. I'm gonna send a link for other other um other countries that are undergoing persecution from voice voice of the martyr. So you can look at it and you can pray for it. A little update. Uh, Reconciliation Church has started a, a process of converting, of translating some of the deceptive material that we can give into, into, into Pakistan. And we're going to look at other countries as well. Right? We're going to try to get links with um, West of the Martyr, Overland, Overland Missions, um, YWAM, other places that we can, 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 can send books into places that can't afford it. And then we're gonna translate the books and, and give them the, the right to print it out. We're gonna put it on our website so they can go on, see the translation without as 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 I mentioned before, that that the you, you digital um print the, put the gospel in the, in digital format. We're gonna try to do that so that we can go online with their phones and uh, read the Bible, read um the material that we can bless others with. Amen. Amen. Thank you again. Can open the mics and say and just bless each other for a close. Bless everyone. Have a great day.